right, so today we're going to talk about fuel injectors. What you see on the table here is a full set of the different fuel injectors that you'll find from the factory on an NA or MB Miata. Uh, as you can see, the labels there give you both the application as well as the size. So they're all pretty much the same size, um, but they are different enough as far as flow rate that you would not want to swap them between the cars, um, assuming that you're running a stock ECU. So each one of these dimensionally and the wire connector here are interchangeable. You can use any of the electrical connectors will plug into all of them and they're the same height overall here. So in theory, any one of these could be swapped into any Miata between 1990 to 2005. Now, just because you can swap any of these in physically, you generally would not want to. Because they each have a different flow rate, if you put, for example, the MV2 injector into your 1.6 Miata, it would end up putting more fuel than what the ECU is intending to do. So really, the most important thing is that your fuel injector matches whatever stock ECU you have. Now, if you have an aftermarket ECU, you're going to get your fuel map tuned, and then it won't matter. You could put any injector you want. In most cases, you would end up going with an aftermarket injector because um, you're probably doing forced induction or something that requires a greater amount of fuel, so you'd go with a larger size injector. However, if we're talking about stock ECUs, each ECU is programmed with a particular fuel map. When you're at wide open throttle, and I think in some cases even at idle, the ECU is running an open loop. And what that means is that it's actually not using the oxygen sensor to monitor the air fuel ratio. The only thing it knows is it's assuming you have a particular size injector, and then it's putting the appropriate amount of fuel based on the airflow that it's seeing coming in from the AFM or the MAF, depending on what your car it is. So if you put a different size injector, essentially what happens is your car will run either rich or lean. So it's very important if you're swapping this around that your ECU matches what the injector is. One thing to note on this is all the flow rates are measured in a standard pressure which is about 43 PSI. So these are each going to give the listed flow rates at that specific pressure. And that's generally kind of a standard when you're looking at flow rates for injectors. It is worth noting that on the NAs, they run very close to that fuel pressure. But on NBs, they actually run closer to 60 PSI. The flow rates functionally will be slightly higher in the NB because they are running at a higher pressure if you're using an MB fuel system. And the design of these injectors is slightly different, that they do prefer the slightly higher fuel pressure because it gives you a better spray pattern out of the injector. One of the last things that I wanted to cover in this video are just some sort of basic good practices and common issues that we've seen with the injectors. Um, in general, you don't see these fail. Um, occasionally they can get clogged up or, or not, uh, not function properly, and usually all they need to do is be cleaned professionally. Or sometimes, in some cases, you can even get away with fuel injector cleaner in the tank. Um, but as far as the install, there's a lot of common issues that I've seen on cars that came in where there was basically some sort of install issue with them that can be very easily prevented. So really, there's not very much to this, but the key points here are it has this spacer at the top, and it has this little seal at the bottom, and then it has this O-ring. Now, all of these are sort of wear items, and anytime you take the injectors in or out, especially if they've been in there a long time, any of those can get damaged. And luckily, you can buy kits um, from pretty much any parts store that will have the full set. And it's usually like per injector, so you'd need four kits to give you four of the O-rings, four of the spacers, and four of the little seals. 
And now these basically just slide off. These may be kind of stuck because they've been on here a while. It's quite stuck and quite dirty. Let's take a look at this one. There you go. So this little seal slides off. And what that seal is, it's important because this is what's sealing the injector up against the intake manifold. And if this seal, these get brittle, they get hard. I think this one is actually split. You can see it's got a big crack in it. And what that's going to do, it might not fit in the intake manifold properly because with the split, it may be a little bit bigger. But even if it does fit, it's going to leak air. And what's going to happen is that's going to basically cause a vacuum leak that it could make your car run a little bit lean or it could make it misfire, um, but it would be very hard to detect. So it's always good to replace those. The, the spacer at the top, similarly, I should stop using the rubber as an example. The spacer at the top, similarly, will basically just slide right off. This one is not as critical. Um, it doesn't actually seal anything. It's really just a spacer, because once this is all installed, this is going to sit down into the intake manifold, and then the fuel rail will sit down over the top. And so that spacer, there's nothing really bolting this in. It'll be able to sort of free spin and sit in there. And so the spacer makes it so it can't slip out. And then the final part is the O-ring on the top here. So this O-ring, you can basically, you can just pop it right out. There's nothing to it. Now the O-rings are one of the most common things to become damaged. Usually what happens is they just get sort of hard and brittle over all the years. And then, you know, your car's 15, 20, 30 years old. You pop the fuel rail off and pop it back on, and they're just not going to seal right. And so what will happen is you'll get basically a fuel leak dripping down the injector, and it's usually just the, the O-ring. Um, it can be a pretty severe leak because it is under pressure at that point. So it can actually spray out of there. For that reason, we always recommend that you replace the O-ring every single time, uh, especially if it's got any amount of age to it. And then finally, when you're installing the injectors, it's kind of awkward because they fit down into the manifold and then the fuel rail goes over and the fuel rail will go over all of them simultaneously. So you kind of need to get them all lined up. And a couple of things that are really common can happen when you're sliding the fuel rail on, it can nick or cut the O-ring. So what we do is I'll put a little bit of grease around the O-ring, just sort of normal axle grease, a thin coating, just to make it a little easier for the O-ring to compress and slide into the fuel rail. And then similarly for this end. If you don't get this lined up perfectly, it's really easy. You start putting the fuel rail on, and when you start tightening down the bolts, it will jam the actual tip of the injector into the intake manifold and can damage it. So really, there's nothing difficult about installing them. It's just you have to be very precise and very careful, and it should all just kind of press together gently. Uh, and then once it's all fully down and seated, then you'd put in the bolts. Um, I think usually most of the problems come when it's not quite aligned right, and it's like, well, you sort of get the bolt lined up and you start torquing it down, and uh, it'll just start to crush either the spacer or the tip or cut the O-ring. And uh, in any of those cases, you're going to have a lot of problems. All right. Well, that's everything that I wanted to cover on the fuel injectors today. Like I said, mostly just about identification, specifications, and then some of the issues that we've seen and uh, some of our best practices. So if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. If you have any suggestions for future videos, be happy. We're always happy to take ideas for new content. And... Thanks for watching.